Mastering why questions unlock the power of due to and owing to. Hello English learners. Welcome back to our series on answering why questions in English. Today, we're focusing on using due to and owing to in formal responses. These phrases can make your English sound more sophisticated and they're especially useful in academic, professional, or other formal contexts. Due to and owing to are similar in meaning and use. They both indicate the reason or cause for something. They are interchangeable and either can be used without changing the meaning of a sentence. Here's an example. 1. The meeting was postponed due to heavy rain. 2. The meeting was postponed owing to heavy rain. Both sentences mean that the meeting was postponed because of heavy rain. Although, due to and owing to are interchangeable, you need to know how to use them correctly. Both phrases should be followed by a noun, a pronoun, or a gerund. Let's consider a few examples. 1. The football match was canceled due to the storm. Noun. 2. Her success is largely owing to her dedication. Gerund. 3. The power cut was due to their failure to pay the bills. Pronoun. Now it's time for you to practice. Here are a few practice sentences. Try filling in the blanks with due to or owing to. 1. The event was canceled, blank, concerns about public safety. 2. His rapid recovery was, blank, his disciplined routine. 3. The concert was postponed, blank, the singer's sudden illness. Remember, practice makes perfect. And that wraps up our lesson on using do to and owing to to answer why questions in formal English. These expressions can greatly enhance your language skills and elevate your formal English conversations. So, don't shy away from using them in your daily English practice. Thanks for joining us today, and as always, keep practicing and happy learning.